Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What quietly screams rich forward slash wealthy? I used to know the price of a gallon of milk but now I don't. I am not rich, but I used to be poor. I needed to know that price. Now we are blessed to have enough that if I need it, I just grab it without looking at the price tag I imagine that being rich would be similar but on a grander scale. Edit, I ended up going to the store just now to get something for my husband and I checked. It's $4.51 for the store brand 2% milk. It's one gallon of milk, Michael. What could it cost, $10? Edit, inflation is making this joke impossible damn. Being able to buy a round of drinks for your friends is wealth. Doing that without affecting your rent is a huge deal and should be celebrated. It's a good goal to have. Wealth is relative too. I make six figures and buy rounds of drinks for people all the time, but I live in Seattle and can't even come close to affording a nice home here. Am I wealthy? This isn't rhetorical, I'm legit asking. Sometimes I feel wealthy and sometimes I really don't. I work in the private jet world. Rich takes tons of photos getting on the plane. Real money just walks straight onto the plane. I could go on for days about the differences. Please do. 1. You can tell a lot by a passenger based on their luggage. Wealthy, light bags nothing crazy usually because they have second set of everything where they are going to. Rich, you would think they are moving based on the amount of bags. 2. Catering, wealthy wants easy simple comfort food. Rich, wants fancy shit for no reason. FYI air plaf food is still air plaf food no matter if you are on American or your own jet. It all kinda sucks. 3. Friendliness, wealthy usually will chat with the flight crew and be chill. Rich want you to act like a limo driver. The wealthier you are the more likely you are to load your own bags or have someone to do it, new rich always expect the flight crew to do it. 4. Wealthy first name basis. New rich Mr. Blah blah blah. 5. Tipping. Wealthy will throw $500 at you for just doing your job. New rich $20 maybe. I'm not the commenter, but my ex-husband's grandfather was a multimillionaire. Had tons of money. Dude wore Skechers golf shoes and JC Penny polos with slacks all the time. Modest, typical older person apartment, drove a Kia Soul, was the most down-to-earth guy. I did his Christmas shopping for him when he eventually wasn't able to and he went all out every time. He donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to charity every year, and often throughout the year. He was born with nothing, raised with nothing, and made his fortune with the help of his friends, also born with nothing, and had a talent for sales. They all built each other up. I was a shoe salesperson back then, and he would wonder why money was scarce for us since sales were how he made his fortune. Then I told him why, and how times have changed and that was it. No arguing, no pull yourself up by the bootstraps like I did, just horror that his way of making money back then was no longer viable or accessible for most people today. Consistently checked on us. He was a landlord, and his prices hadn't gone up since the Iotes. We'd have Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve with him and it usually consisted of ordering dominoes, and tipping the driver an insane triple digit amount because Jesus would have done that, and watching westerns with him. Edited to add my favorite thing about how he ran the apartments because I almost forgot, he would waive December's rent every year because he wanted to make sure people had enough for the holidays. It's what Jesus would have done, he'd say. I miss him dearly and bitterly. I still have the leather jacket he had me buy for myself during one of his Christmas shopping runs he had me do because I deserve nice things. I can't bear to part with it and I've stopped wearing it so often so I can keep it nice and orderly. I was like him, was born with nothing and raised with nothing and he made sure we were well taken care of after his death. He was incredibly wealthy, and not just with money. Anyway, sorry for rambling. Got kinda lost in the memories there. One more edit, thank you for sharing memories of your loved ones in the replies. I'm sitting here, a grown woman, crying in class and my heart is full listening to you talk about your loved ones who do similar things. The world kinda sucks at times, lately it's feeling more like all the time with all the bad news swirling around, and it's nice to be reminded that there's good out there. Grandpa Don would be proud of you all and knows you're doing your best. Much love. Last edit, I promise, hey I know it's kind of a reddit cliche and this has been repeated ad nauseum, but please don't spend money on awards for this comment that doesn't matter in the scheme of things. The brave men and women fighting for their livelihoods in our cry need help. 
There is no pressure to donate times are tough and I of all people get it, just please don't spend money on fake reddit points they don't matter in the end and your money can go towards actually helping people. Donate in grandpa Don's name if you feel the itch to spend money please. Here's a couple to start. HTTPS help.rescue.org forward slash donate. HTTPS doorbox.org forward slash Ukrainian dash relief dash fund. Alan Clark, a British politician born into a wealthy family, once disparaged someone by describing them as the sort of person who bought all his own furniture. I'm the sort of person who has scavenged all of my furniture from the curb or a dumpster. You must be very wealthy then. Not buying furniture. Asterisk edit, this is my most upvoted comment. Thanks. Asterisk edit 2, thanks for the awards. What does this even mean though? Did Clark inherit all his furniture? Not pay for his furniture. Got all his furniture as gifts. Does he have no personal taste and say in what furniture he wants? If not, what does he do when acquiring new furniture? Just say give me. I'm not rich enough to understand this. So, it's not that he bought no furniture. The key word here is all. Many wealthy families have key pieces that are passed down through generations. Artwork, antiques, china, silver, glassware, etc. No one wants to sit on an uncomfortable 100 plus year old couch, but they will mix a new, high quality sofa with a pair of Louis XVI Jace Buffets their grandmother picked up in Paris between the wars and a Saruk rug their aunt didn't need anymore. No one would be crass enough to mention the details in real life, though. You'd be assumed to know if it was an important style. They just call them family pieces and family pieces always 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 have a story that goes with them that's as important as the piece itself. Old money houses are never full of only new things. They have patina. Edit, thank you for the award. No logos on their clothes, but very well fitted, tailored, and pressed forward slash cleaned. Far as I'm concerned this one is huge. Knew a girl who always wore beautiful clothes that were anything but loud. No tags, no huge designer brand names on them. She was a diplomat's daughter and her family ran in literally the top circles in her country. Yep, the really rich people try to stand out as little as possible while having a really nice wardrobe. The fake rich people buy clothes with big ass logos, luxury branded watches, Jordans, or whatever sneakers are popular that season, etc. I know it's not a big thing, but people who use really nice plates and silver cutlery very casually. I've seen poor people with mustangs. But I've never seen poor people eating with polished silver. My family isn't poor but we only bring out the silver on special occasions like Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. We got a set of really nice china as a wedding present. Beautiful pattern, gold around the edges, etc. For the first 10 years, we used them maybe twice a year, carefully hand washed them and stored them away in a cabinet. Then we suddenly realized, this isn't Buckingham Palace, what the hell are we doing? Now we use them a little more regularly than just Christmas and Easter, and to our parents' initial horror, put them in the dishwasher after dinner. If the gold eventually wears off, who cares? These dishes aren't worth anything to anyone but us. I used to work at a clothing store. This lady comes in, she's well-dressed looks great and is super polite to the people helping her. At checkout she pulls out a black Amex card. She was not my first black Amex card customer but she was above and beyond more of a human than the others. I assume she was rich as fuck. What's the deal with this black Amex card? Is that the most prestigious card available? Amex black cards have no limit, must be paid off in full each month, you have to spend some huge number each month forward slash year. But you can use it anywhere and get access to the Amex black card customer service which is basically a whole operation dedicated to fetching whatever you ask for you 24 sevenths. Like some girl was doing a school project about the Dead Sea the parents had the PPL go get her some sand for her project. The average black card holder has a net worth of 11 million. They spend hundreds of thousands without trying. On personal expenses, not business mind you. It's not a credit card. It's a charge card. You have to pay it off every month, no exceptions. Amex evaluates your average monthly and yearly spend before even inviting you to join. It's on the level it created. Other brands and tier cards don't really compare. Even cards like Chase Private Client. It gives it's the best, but it's invite only so it must mean something. 
I worked at a high-end clothing store in Vancouver and had a woman come in looking for a belt. She was very warm and kind and was in the city for a wedding. She picked out a simple belt but it was probably well over $200 and she pulled out a graphite Amex, must be the same card. And off she went. I could tell I had just encountered probably the wealthiest customer I'd ever had. If it was a matte grey forward slash silverish color, and a metal card, not sure if you were able to tell, it was probably the Amex Platinum card. Not quite the same league as Amex Black, but it's the next highest tier that Amex offers. It requires a $700 annual fee, and it's where you'll find most of the high income forward slash net worth individuals who use Amex. The black card is in a league of its own, 